hello and welcome to our yeah, first webinar this year in 2016 with the topic um, application fan core units advanced features my name is Thorsten Reibel um, yeah I'm sitting here together with Jürgen as always but I will yeah conduct uh, this webinar alone today because Jürgen's voice is very weak so it makes not really sense for him uh, to talk right now especially in a webinar um, yeah if you have any questions please give it us in the chat um, as always we try to answer this uh, during the webinar at the end of the webinar if not possible um, yeah we will do it in the feedback email as always um, yeah we have also some question at the end of the webinar for you uh, please answer these questions um, to just to complete the webinar and um, if you cannot do it right now we will remind you and um, around six questions um, about the topics we have today so then we let's let's start with the content of the webinar topic is application fan core units advanced features so what is the agenda for today it takes around one hour today a bit more maybe um, yeah uh, first of all small overview about fan core unit control in our fan core actuators but very short it's not the topic today we would like to go in some more details with our special functions special parameters of our fan core actuators which is so-called run-on behavior, limitations and forced operation. Uh, then I talk a bit about the flexibility of the valve outputs and um, not so much known but interesting the parallel operation of valve drives. You will see what's behind and then we would like to go a bit into the room temperature controller especially in the new RTCs, unified RTC concept is a, is a topic behind and we will also talk about some features, the one set point and two set point mode, master slave concept behind, additional heating cooling stage uh, possible here, and um, also the presence detector, the new one, is um, yeah, has an integrated room temperature controller. Also, this will I will mention a bit. Then the topic switching between heating and cooling affects both devices, fan coil actuators, but also the room temperature controller. Yeah, and then we go to some yeah, solutions, let's say. So not directly product oriented anymore. Of course, it has to do with uh, the products. Uh, yeah, fan coil solution with a blower actuator, not with a fan coil actuator, but with a blower actuator. It's also an option here. Fan coil control with electrical heater. What does it mean together with our actuators? And then with our fan coil actuator, also some solutions which has to do with window contact or, or any drip tray or dew point sensor. Um, and also external temperature measurement, not only the room temperature controller, but also an external sensor can be integrated into the solution. Yeah, then we have fan coil actuator with compressor, a very special application, as well as control of EC motors. EC stands for electronic commutating motors. Yeah, and then last but not least, uh, we would like to show you yeah, an ETS project. Uh, together with the visualization, yeah, together of course with these components, fan coil actuator and a new RTC, new room temperature controller, um, just to show you also in, in practice um, um, how it works with all these options or most of the options I will explain right now. Um, of course, as well as the presentation and the recorded um, webinar file, you will also get this ETS project plus uh, this visualization project based on the iSpare visualization. So it gives you also later on a chance to test something, to try something, to, to adapt maybe this programming we have done here and uh, just to check the functions. Good, let's start. Um, fan coil unit control, I think it's clear, it's not completely new. Here, here a symbol or a, a picture of a, yeah, a fan coil unit. Um, this four pipe system means we have here a heat exchanger and a cool exchanger. System is supplied either with cold water or with warm water. We control with our fan coil <coughs> actuator the valves, heating or cooling valve, and uh, additionally the speed of the fan. Uh, that's our, t uh, our target, our topic. Here you see a four pipe system, it can be only a two pipe system, then you have only one or two um, pipes coming in and going out. Um, depends on the situation, but always the same valve control and fan speed control. Yeah, and our mostly used fan coil actuators, the FCAS, four components available as you know. <coughs> uh, I think in April we have done our webinar around these new fan coil actuators. 
So if you want, you can have a look there again. But only here a small summary what we are going to do with this component. Um, we have here the two components controlling either electrothermal valve drives or motor valve drives means I have here four electronic outputs. I can control up to four um, thermoelectric valve drives or two motor valve drives. Without and with manual operation is the option here. <coughs> and here these three inputs, I come to this a bit later, which allow you to connect any binary signals but also analog signals can be connected. IBUS2 support is also a topic behind here, but I don't want to go into details. It's something uh, purely product related. And then the other two, we have <coughs> same concept, same principle, but only different valve outputs. Means we have here two 0 to 10 volt valve outputs to control dedicated 0 to 10 volt motor valve drives. So only two valve drives can be connected here, but the rest is the same and not different from the, uh, the former ones. Yeah, if you have a look into the parameters of the, of the applications, um, there are a lot of functions behind, as you might know, but we would like to talk about only the blue highlighted functions right now, today. So this is something which is a bit different, a bit new sometimes, or we've got a lot of questions around this. So the run-on behavior is new. I will explain a bit. It has to do with the minimum time in a level. Uh, not directly the same, but it's a bit yeah, similar, let's say. Limitations in forced operation. Very interesting. has to do with FEN, but also with valve control. Then I would like to talk a bit about this flexibility uh, of uh, the, the valve outputs, which includes also parallel operation of the valves. Yeah. So these are the topics I would like to talk about right now concerning our FEN actuators, FCA. Uh, ah, before I do this, uh, one small hint. Um, you see here we have, in addition, two options, direct mode and uh, automatic mode for fan coil actuators. What does it mean? Direct mode has to do with the fan speed control. Directly via any local push button, for example, in the room, you would like to run directly speed 1, 2 or 3 or switch off the fan. Yeah, this is <coughs> a typical situation you have sometimes. But normally you work in automatic mode, means room temperature controller controls the fan speed, but also the position of the valve, depending on the request in the room temperature request. But back to the direct mode, at the moment we have two options to control directly the fan speed. With a one bit command, up and down, means with value zero I go down with the speed, with value one I go up. So two rockers of a, of a button, left and right, could be used for this purpose. Not new, already existing in the former device. Then we can send directly to each speed a one-bit telegram. So four communication objects are existing for off speed one, two, three. And in the former FENCO actuator, FCA S1.1 M was a former device uh, until spring of last year. We had a third communication object, one byte, to run the fan speed directly. Means value zero, one, two, three is valid. And this is also a group object or communication object you need for communication with the new RTCs, but at the moment not available. So we had to, to let me say, uh, skip this at the moment because it was not possible to certify this way we want to do this. But we will adapt this in the next application coming during this year. I cannot exactly say when, but we will give a new application on the market very soon. And then all this missing group object, one byte, is than existing for fan speed control. So this is a small hint I would like to give to you. So let's come now to the special features of these fan actuators, run-on behavior. New, not existing in the former device. What does it mean? Let's read. Keeps the fan running in the actual stage, though there is a request for lower speed. So the room temperature controller says no, lower speed, but <coughs> A program time, the fan in this speed will still run before it goes down to the next speed. So for each change of a speed from 3 to 2, 2 to 1 and 1 to 0, we can adjust a certain time where the fan is still running before it goes to the next speed. It has to do with switching down the speed, not with switching up or go going up with the speed, only if I would like to go down. Practically, what does it mean? 
let's take uh, especially the parameter run on behavior speed one means how long shall the fan still run in speed one until it's allowed to go to speed zero or off yeah example you have any heat exchange any heating system and you switch off room temperature control you can do this with the room temperature controller for example what would happen normally you close the valve but also switch off the fan immediately to avoid this because it can cause any overheating in the heat exchanger you program this run on behavior for speed one so it does not go off completely at the beginning runs a certain time still in speed one and then it goes off yeah. so same for cooling a cooling system maybe a fan core unit with cooling so you are maybe not allowed to switch off completely the fan immediately um, after switching off the valve or uh, closing the valve then you also run at minimum in speed one a certain time and then you yeah, reduce condensation or prevent icing maybe in your your uh, cool exchanger you have and this run on behavior is not always running you can activate this or deactivate this with a yeah, telegram yeah. so but very useful there was a request for this function of course compared with the old device so now existing in our fan actuators Yeah, we have another function, we call it minimum dwell period in fan speed, or in other words, minimum time in a level. Um, so if I go from one speed to another, before you're allowed to do this, um, it has to run a certain time in each level. Avoids continuous switching between the levels. So it's a parameter you can adjust for each, um, yeah, for the speed, for the fan, how long it shall stay uh, in each level. Um, there are sometimes a confusion run on behavior compared with this minimum time and level what's the difference first of all run on time works only for speed going down as mentioned so if I more or less would like to have a lower speed minimum time and level is running all the time also if you go up and it was only 10 seconds running in speed 2 but there's a request for speed 3 but you have said no I need minimum one minute in each level then it will st still run before it goes to speed 3 so it works both in going up and going down and there are some further distinctions you see here a difference between direct mode automatic mode and manual operation direct mode is if I go to my local push button and change the speed directly automatic mode via RTC and manual operation is um, manual operation at the, the fan call actuator directly so run on time works always so it's a high priority function let's say also if I go to my menu operation I cannot switch off directly it's it's fixed inside if it's active of course only if it's active this minimum time and level only active for automatic mode yeah. so if you go to direct mode you can directly go up and down with a fan without any minimum time only again um, run on time is active good that's the difference you should know Let's come to a further function, limitations and forced operation. What does it mean? Limitation and forced operation is a possibility to influence both the valve but also the fan speed. To, to, due to any reason, you might be, it might be necessary to say, okay, I have to close the valve, for example. You can work this or do this with forced operation. Or let's make here these examples. In a hotel room, for example, ventilation shall be limited to speed one during the night due to noise reasons so you would like to have regulation of the temperature but maximum with speed one no problem you can do it with limitation for example or in case of any malfunction of your HVAC system you would like to have a position in your valve of 50 percent or here continuous ventilation you would like to have but no heating and cooling what does it mean you have to close the valve but only maybe speed one shall run means you have only ventilation in the room but no cooling no heating so you have some options here both for the valve and the fan speed to to force this uh, let me say uh, yeah, the valve and the, the fan into any certain position though normally it should be in a different position so what is available again we have to distinguish between direct mode and automatic mode we have to distinguish between valve and fan Limitation is four times available, but only for the fan and only in automatic mode. 
Fast operation is more flexible, let's say. It's available for valve and fan. For the valve, we can have up to three fast operations, yeah, three positions, you can say. For the fan, only one. And these four, yeah, four, uh, let me say, limitations have priorities from one to four. Highest priority is one. The same for priority first operation, also from one to three. So if you have automatic mode, you take only limitations. If only limitation is necessary for fan, you take this one here. In all other cases, you need first operation, both for the valve and the fan. If we have a look to the parameters uh, inside um, yeah, the fan actuators, you see for the fan, four limitations are available. You can adjust any kind of combination here. You can say, okay, I need only off and one, would be like this here not more, and if I activate limitation, of course, then it's 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 working. Yeah. Fast operation fan, the same principle, Yeah, but remember only one fast operation is available, for the fan at least. Yeah, if you go to the valve, we have three times fast operation available, and you just directly hear which value shall be behind priority one, for example, maybe 50%, maybe 20%. Yeah. yeah, and the group objects to activate this, of course, are also necessary. And you see here four times limitation for the fan, uh, one bit objects, one for first operation only for the fan, and three for the valve. So it makes it very flexible to, to, yeah, to adjust something which is at certain times necessary, independent of any menu operation or any automatic mode. Yeah, flexibility of the outputs. I would like to explain a bit with some pictures here. Um, you see here is a component with four electronic outputs. Um, you can connect motor valve drives and you need two outputs for open and closing. Or you can connect to one output also electrothermal valve drives. I think that is also known. Uh, you can mix it here, no problem as you can see. and. It's not only for one room, all these outputs. You can see, okay, maybe this is one room here, motor valve drive output, and um, one of these electronic outputs with electrothermal valves is for another room, for only heating, maybe. Yeah, you are completely independent. You see here, you have for each of your yeah, connected valves, uh, different control values possible from any room thermostat, whatever you have. Or here, two motor valve drives connected, um, maybe for heating and cooling, or maybe we see it later on for parallel operation of, of valve drives, also possible on an additional heating cooling stage. Yeah. So it's it's absolutely flexible here. And what do we have here? Four electronic outputs. Um, yeah, again for um, different rooms. Maybe you need only one electrothermal output. Maybe for fan coil unit control in your room together with a fan here and then the three others can be used for maybe pure heating systems or heating solution in other rooms for example yeah let's come now directly to the parallel operation of valves it's in a nice feature uh, very new or new in these components what does it mean maybe here on channel a b or on, on output a b i have connected my heating output my heating valve but at certain times I need additionally a second stage for heating, means an, a separate uh, valve have to be operated with a separate water pipes behind, separate hot water, just to, to improve the, the heating situation in the room. So what can you do? We can temporarily switch on the second output to work together with the first output in parallel. So they get the same control value, both outputs and work in parallel in principle. Yeah. Um, you see it here, possible with two motor valve drives. If you have electrothermal valve drives connected, then only channel A and C can work in parallel together. That's here the limit. But in principle, two outputs can work in parallel. And of course, you can activate this via a communication object. You have to enable this only here in the parameters. And then you can say, OK, parallel mode, please. You send the command via a group address, and then it works. In parallel. I can show it to you later in my visualization example. We can enable this and then you will see that both outputs get the same control value. Um, 
important is to know that after enabling this parallel mode, not immediately both valves work in parallel, only after sending a new control value from the room thermostat, then both valves will work in parallel. Good. So, some features of our fan actuator FCAS. Let's come now to the RTC, the new RTC, the unified RTC concept. I would like to explain a bit. Um, as you know, we have a lot of, let me say, different type of, of room temperature controllers. And step by step, these room temperature controllers will be improved in terms of software, but also hardware changes behind. To have a unified, consistent, let's say, application for all devices, the same programming, the same way of operation. So there is no difference between the different uh, room temperature controller anymore in the next future. Makes it for the customer much easier to work with our components. And um, not all components have been uh, um, improved at the moment, but it goes step by step. I think these components we see here on the left um, already existing as a new RTC concept. Some are still left, uh, you see it on the next page. But let's come to the features which is are uh, which is existing here, which are existing the features. Um, we have a so-called master-slave concept. I will explain a bit what's behind. Makes it very easy to to integrate master-slave uh, functionality now. Of course, we have an ETS4 and ETS5 application, but now without power tool. So pure parameter, let me say, a window you know from ETS, and no power power tool anymore necessary. Only if you would like to use still the ETS3 which is still possible, then you have to use a power tool. One set point mode, I've explained as well what's behind. It's also a bit more user friendly now. Yeah, what else do we have? Uh, additional stage for heating and cooling, also something I will explain um, a feature now in our RTCs. And um, yeah, usability, usability, usability concept, what does it mean? Operation and indication is now also uh, more consistent, um, so it's not any more different depending on the uh, room temperature controller you choose. Important is that you cannot update directly most of these devices only with application or with firmware to have this new function, and in most of the cases you need a new hardware. So it's a new order code. Exception is a Bush Prion 3.5, this is uh, LCD um, display. And the Comfort Touch, both need only a firmware update to be able to, to, to run the new functions and the new application. But all others will have uh, a new component behind. Yeah, one set point and two set point mode. I would like to explain a bit. Um, you remember, two set point mode, if I have both, heating and cooling, uh, is something we know from the beginning of our RTC solutions, what does it mean? We adjust inside the room temperature controller two different set points. One for heating, assumed here for example 20 degrees, and um, 22 for cooling. In between we have a dead zone where you have neither heating or cooling. Only if you are below 20 degrees then the heating mode is active, so the control value heating will be sent out. If you come above 20 degrees nothing happens neither heating nor cooling, only above 22 degrees, we are in the cooling mode again, or in the cooling mode at all. Temperatures going down below 22, no cooling anymore, neither heating, and only below 20, it's again heating mode. Yeah, so we have two different set points. Can happen that you see two different set points, of course, also in your display, because you are in either in the heating or in the cooling mode, which of course sometimes confuses the user. So what is possible now? The so one set point mode. Ah, before we come to this, how to adjust this here. Um, set point heating comfort equal to set point cooling. If you say no, then you, then you have the two set point mode. If, so if you say yes, then it's a one set point mode. So no means I can adjust the set point for heating comfort and for cooling comfort. Yeah, the other solution now available. So one set point mode means I adjust only one set point, 20 de uh, 21 degrees here in this example, and I pr adjust only a hysteresis. I, I can adjust this freely. In this example, 
one degree plus and one degree, degree uh, one Kelvin minus one Kelvin plus. So let's go to this example again here. So the graph shows again our room temperature. We are here in the heating mode because we are below 21 degrees set point. If you overshoot 21, nothing happens. No cooling, no heating. Only if you are over 22, then it's cooling, of course. Now it's getting too hot. System is cooling, room temperature is going down. If it reaches 21, neither heating nor cooling is necessary. Only if it's below 20, then heating starts again and stopped at 21 again. So in principle, also we have here a kind of different set points, but not visible for the user. It's only one set point. And if you change something in the set point, it changed automatically here uh, for both modes, let me say, the set point. So it's, it's similar to your air conditioning in your car. You do the same, you adjust only a temperature, never any heating or cooling set point. And you'd like to have the temperature. Of course, with a small, let me say, hysteresis, which is necessary. Otherwise, you have always switching between heating and cooling. Yeah. Okay, to do this, you go to the parameters, you see you adjust yes here for set point heating comfort equal to set point cooling, and then you adjust only one set point plus a hysteresis. Good. What else is interesting in the new RTC concept? Master slave. What is master slave? Master slave means in terms of room temperature control, we have one master temperature controller. That's a device which is calculating the control value and sending out the control value to, your act, uh, to our actuator, in this case, the fan actuator. But maybe I would like to have an additional yeah, room temperature controller, first of all, working as a slave. And this device is not controlling the room temperature because only already done here by the master. It's only interesting to have such a slave inside your room to operate functions means to, to change a set point for example to see the actual status or the actual room temperature here but it's only necessary to communicate with the master to exchange information in terms of operation and indication nothing more and that's only a slave you see here two slaves you can have more than one slave yeah, if you have a big room and you have two three operating points you can install more of them First of all, nothing new, but there was always, let me say, a problem to program this correctly. So that's much easier now, because we can adjust in the parameters a room temperature controller as a master device, then it's a controller, and additionally as a slave device, the other component. Then it's only, let me say, giving some data to the master or uh, getting some data. Uh, so then it works easy to easily together, together with, of course, correct communication object assignment. I come to this in the next slide. So it's more or less a synchronization for indication and operation between master and slave devices. Can be more than one slave, as, as already mentioned. If you don't need this concept, you can still program a single device. Means it's working alone. There is no slave necessary, no master. And then it's a standard solution, let's say. Yeah, and. To do this, if you activate one as a master and the other one as a slave, you have dedicated group objects now available, which are really yeah, named the same in principle. You see here RTC, control on off, master. The same you find here as a slave. And you know these belong together, these group objects. I assign them with the same group address and then it's working together. You do the same with all these other necessary, let me say, group objects here. They would like to have any exchange in information. And then finished. You have done your work, and both devices work correctly in master slave mode. Here's an option, optional object here, uh, so called superimposed operating mode. What does it mean? You can add an external further device to change the operating mode. So, one white right communication object, as you see here, off, comfort, standby, echo, frost, four or five values, for example, from a superior visualization. And you add this one here and you can change at least from there also the operating mode. And of course, both the slave and the master will um, work accordingly. Good. Further features inside the RTC, the new RTC, additional heating cooling stage. What does it mean? 
Additional heating or additional stage allows to run a separate heating cooling circuit. Example to understand this. You have a room with cooling ceiling only, which is a basic stage or the base stage, and you need a classical fan coil unit as an additional stage to, to cool down the room quickly if necessary. Because the cooling ceiling is a slow system, works in most of the cases, but not in all cases, you need for fast change an additional fan coil unit. We have to control this. Of course, you have in a room only one room temperature controller, but it has to handle both, uh, let me say, uh, yeah, outputs of both systems uh, in case of, 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 let me say, change, uh, or if, if, if case of, of um, strong change of, 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 of room temperature necessary. The same for a heating system, for example, a floor heating system, yeah, which is the basic stage, but the towel here is an additional, uh, let me say, stage if necessary to heat up the room quickly or to, to dry uh, the towel if you need. So uh, you need this as well as an additional stage. And this is now easily controllable, let me say, in, inside the new RTC. First of all, in the RTC, the room temperature control you can adjust, first of all, of course, is it heating or cooling? Or only cooling, only heating? And one of these options also with additional stage. Here you see all the options here. So in uh, um, the most powerful situation, you have both heating and cooling, plus for each an additional stage available. And these additional stage you can adjust with independent control parameters. So you have really independent uh, parameters here. For example, the control value type for the additional stage shall be a fan coil. We adjust this here. And then you, of course, can adjust this fan coil <laughs> unit as well. You can see, okay, standard parameters or free configuration means I can adjust here the p factor or the i value uh, indiv individually, for example. Yeah, and for all of my basic and additional stages, both for heating and cooling, I have individual group objects. Um, so I can get individual, let me say, or I can send individual control values out to the actuator behind. Important is when starts the additional stage uh, with cooling or heating, and there's one parameter called temperature difference to basic stage. In this case, 20 by 0 0.12 degrees Kelvin. And what does it mean? The set point temperature of the additional stage is a defined as a difference to the basic set point. I come to an example in the next slide. If my basic set point is 20 degrees, yeah, yeah, and I have heating active, then I can adjust here 2 degrees then it will start with 22 degrees set point with the additional stage. Yeah? So the value represents the set point at which the additional stage starts to operate. I will show it in the next slide in an example. Um, important is, of course, for heating, <coughs> the set point of the additional stage is higher. For cooling, it's lower because intention is to, to heat with heating and to have a higher set point and uh, vice versa for cooling. If you want, you can adjust this value to zero. What does it mean? Then you have two parallel circuits at the same set point. Yeah, this is also possible here. So you could have two different systems in your room. Uh, cooling ceiling, for example, and fan coil unit. And if you want, you operate them in parallel, but with different control parameters. That's the same set point. Um, you can activate and deactivate this. It's also possible. So it's not only running all the time. So the basic load can be activated and deactivated via a, a, a group object. You see it here. And um, you can also adjust a minimum control value for the basic load. You can say, OK, uh, during the normal time, I've always, let me say, a low uh, yeah, control value for my, my floor heating system necessary. So it's always slightly warm on the ground. Um, I don't want to switch it off. Only in summer, then it's really nice to have a cold bottom as well, cold ground as well, then I switch it off completely. Yeah, so the basic stage can be switched and can be uh, adjusted with a, let me say, minimum control value if you want. Yeah, and example, as already mentioned, uh, for example, you have cooling active. 
your base set point is 22 degrees. When starts the additional stage cooling, you have adjusted maybe uh, two degrees difference. Means then with 22, uh, sorry, with 20 degrees, um, the additional stage is active. Uh, so it's a difference between the base set point and uh, um, yeah, the new set point for, for the additional stage, which makes the system running. Vice versa for heating, base set point is 20. If you would like to have more than 22 degrees or 22 degrees, then it starts heating with additional stage. Yeah, the temperature difference here also two degrees. So also a feature in the new RTC. Let's come to a further topic, which is not only affecting uh, the, the room temperature control, but both components, the actuator, the Fanco actuator, but also the um, RTC. If we have both heating and cooling possible in our room, on our system, we can have either two-pipe or four-pipe system. Two-pipe means I have either hot or cold water in the system. Four-pipe means uh, independent water circuits for hot and cold water. How does a complete solution know when heating has to be active <coughs> or cooling? We can adjust in the room temperature controller the following. Automatic, first of all. What does it mean? device switches automatically between heating and cooling and to the associated set point of course. So you don't have to do anything, automatically the system knows, okay, I have this room temperature, this set point is necessary and then I know heating or cooling is necessary. In many cases that's working, you adjust only automatic mode and then it's working. But in some cases it's necessary to switch over intentionally from cooling to heating or from, from heating to cooling and um, I can do this intentionally by sending a command to the room temperature controller, then it's changed to heating or cooling. Or in addition to this option with the object, communication object, it's also possible to do this change between heating and cooling directly at the uh, component, as, at the room temperature controller, uh, with local operation, let's say. So um, a further option you have here. Might also be interesting um, in some special cases, but Mainly we work with automatic mode and um, with switching over uh, to heating and cooling via a separate command. So if you look to the parameters of the room temperature controller, the RTC, you see you have the option here, switch over heating cooling automatic via object or via object and um, via local operation um, in the room. And of course also a group object is an existing. If I activate this one here, I need a command from anywhere to change between heating and cooling. The Fanco actuators have similar parameters. If you go there inside the parameters, you find here Fanco operating mode, two or one control values, two control values if you have both heating and cooling, one if you have only heating or cooling, but also the option here switching with switching object to switch between. Uh, heating and cooling. Of course, if I have only one control value, one valve, it's either heating or cooling, you cannot switch. Makes no sense. But here, always with two control values, then it might be necessary to switch also here via communication object, via a telegram. Huh? And again, also here, a uh, group object is available. Huh? Of course, I have to switch then intentionally both the room thermostat and also the fan collector. Yeah, let's come to some practical, let me say, um, yeah, explanations, what does it mean practically? Um, if you have a two-pipe system with only heating or only cooling, of course, you don't have to switch between heating and cooling, no adjustments necessary. Yeah? Uh, it's absolutely simple. Yeah? If you have a four-pipe system with both heating and cooling, means maybe <coughs> Both uh, kind of water can be inside the system, hot or, or cold water. Yeah? Um, mostly the automatic mode uh, in the room thermostat and uh, in the FCA is okay. Yeah? Because again, the system knows 
uh, the room temperature, it uh, has a set point, it calculates the right control value and sends only the control value either to the heating or cooling uh, group object um, and um, of course the fan actuator will, will <coughs> act correctly. Sometimes it's necessary to, to force the system to go to heating or cooling. Yeah, of course then these parameters are interesting and let's have some examples where we have to do this. Um, in a two-pipe system with both heating and cooling. So there can be hot water in the system but also cold water depending on the season. Yeah, it's, it's sometimes necessary to switch over. Say okay, now I supply the system with hot water and I force of course my components behind room temperature controller and also fan actuator to this mode. So nothing can go wrong, the system knows heating air has to be active and uh, it will control correctly let's say. What do you do? You activate all these, these parameters, switching object uh, in the RTC and also in the FENCO actuator, assign the group address, the same group address to both, and of course from any central point you send now the command heating or cooling. Yeah. Or in a four pipe system with both heating and cooling, but never hot and cold water supply in parallel. Yeah. So all the system has to know, okay, hmm, what kind of water is now? Yeah, active heating, or hot water and cold water, then it uh, can be necessary to switch over directly to the mode and uh, you have to do it then intentionally. So it depends a bit on the project, on the situation. Um, in many cases you don't have to do anything here with this object but in some cases necessary and of course our components are prepared for this. Good. Um, other hint I would like to give, another information uh, has to do with our room temperature controller, the new presence detector. I think I know, I hope you know this device, very nice component, but it is also an integrated room temperature controller. So it's not only a presence detector, but also an RTC inside, yeah, with all the functions, except of course operation and indication. You can nothing change here and see anything here in terms of room temperature control. But it might be interesting to say, okay, in a, maybe in a, in a restroom or in kitchens, when nobody has to operate anything around room temperature, I use this device both for presence detection but also for room temperature controller. Perfect. Yeah. Or in some large office rooms where you have, of course, a classical uh, room temperature controller where you can operate something, uh, you would like to measure an additional point at an additional point the room temperature and you transfer only from here the room temperature to the controller yeah, and you create a mean value maybe to have a more precise room temperature measurement. Yeah, also possible. And not only a simple, let me say, uh, average value can be calculated, you can also weight these measurements. Um, you can see, okay, I take a bit less of this temperature measurement in the room, uh, sorry, in the presence detector, a bit more in my room temperature controller and this is uh, the basis for my uh, calculation of the measurement of the room temperature. So keep this in mind, a nice product for some cases to use it as a complete controller also for or only for temperature measurement. Um, another option is for FENCOR units, coming back to FENCOR units, uh, a good solution is to measure the room temperature directly at the air inlet of the FENCOR unit. Uh, it's for faster reaction of the system, for more precise regulation of FENCOR units, uh, very interesting. Um, so if it's, this component is ceiling mounted and it's very close or closer to the uh, air inlet of the FENCOR unit, it could be an option, but please be careful if you have any air draft, yeah, which of course happened there, that can also trigger maybe the presence detector. Uh, of course something we don't want, uh, so you have to be cautious with this, but in principle if it's not very close, um, and it does not, let me say, get not triggered by any air draft, it could be a solution. Uh, furthermore, um, if you measure at the ceiling, the room temperature, it might be a bit too high for heating, for example. You can program also here an offset. To say, okay, it's two degrees too high, let's reduce it by two degrees so that it sends out only the correct value. Okay, so now let's come to some solutions. Of course, always together with our new RTC and our Fenkel actuators. Um, what do I have here is a very simple solution 
based on the Fenko, not the Fenko actuators, but the blower actuators, FCLS, which are not directly made for Fenko unit control, but it's possible to do this. Um, the blower actuators, they have only relay outputs for the fan speed control, you see it here, as the Fenko actuators, not different. And they have an additional, let me say, relay output for controlling a valve. But as it's only a, a, a simple relay, you can control only electrothermal valve drives. No motor valve drives. Neither any 0 to 10 volt valves. So it's for simple electrothermal valve drives. And as it is not an electronic output, you cannot pulse the output. So pulse width modulation. If you need this for, for operating correctly the valve or more precise the valve drive, it's not possible with uh, the blower actuator. It's only to open the valve in case of any cooling or heating request and the room temperature you control via the fan speed only. So only if there is a request for heating cooling, the valve will be open completely. If not, it will be closed. This solution is possible yeah, and uh, in some cases sufficient. Um, so you can do this with a blower actuator, you don't have to use a Fenkel actuator. Um, it's a bit more, let me say, uh, cost efficient here, of course, component costs a bit less. And um, yeah, keep this in mind as an option. Let's go to the options to do this, or to the programming to do this. Uh, I have here some examples. For example, here a four-pipe system for heating and cooling it means you have to control two valve drives. How to do this? Um, I have here an example with a one volt blower actuator which has only one output for the valve. So I need additional switching output from any switch actuator, for example. What you do, you control sensor control value heating to the dedicated objects of the blower actuators. Status cooling is responsible for, for switching over between heating and cooling. Also here important to switch between heating and cooling to operate the right valve. Uh -huh. And of course it has to operate uh, the cooling valve as well and the status heating has to operate uh, the heating valve which is here in this case connected to an additional switch actuator. So that's the way how to do this. Uh, yeah, in the parameters you adjust here, it's the parameter of the blower actuator here. You adjust here the um, number of control outputs or inputs um, two because we have heating and cooling and you activate this toggle object here to switch between heating and cooling. Uh, coming to a two-pipe system with heating and cooling, both. So we have, depending on situation, hot or cold water in the system. Same principle. The only difference is, of course, that independent of heating and cooling, I have to activate always the output, which is here uh, output B and the one-fold blower actuator. And um, yeah, it's in principle always active if there is a heating or cooling request. And last but not least, very simple, a simple two-pipe system heating or cooling. Yeah, you see, very simple, only a control value from the room thermostat to the fan coil, uh, sorry, bl um, blower actuator, it's a wrong wording here, blower actuator. And um, status cooling is only activating the valve drive if there's a cooling request. Good, another option is to, sorry, just a <coughs> something to drink. Um, option is here to run an electrical heater with our fan actuators. Yeah. So in some cases, for example, if you have mainly cooling necessary in your project, only a few times, but per year heating necessary, then you say, come on, it makes no sense to have a water-based heating system. You take only electrical heater in your Fenko unit. You have to switch on and off electrically, let's say. And then uh, the blower um, heats up the room together with this um, electrical heater. So what can you do? Of course, we can use the output H in our Fenko actuators, FCAS, which is a relay output only. You connect here your electrical heater and we are status heating, which is a group object. You activate this channel, switch on the electrical heater, and of course then you can heat and change the temperature depending on the fan speed. Yeah. Also a nice feature, and this output H is not only, but it's made for this, for this uh, purpose, for this application.
Good. Um, I would like to give some information about these three inputs we have in our Fanker actuator. How can you use them? In principle, three inputs. I think I mentioned already, you can connect uh, digital signals, binary signals, but also analog signals. But let's come to the possible solutions. Typical one is window contact. You connect the magnetic read contact from your window to this input. And you program this input, go to frost mode in case of heating, to shut down the heating. So if you open the window, nobody can heat anymore. The same for cooling. But here we go to the uh, so-called overheat protection mode, which, what does it mean? Set point is then 35 degrees, practically also both the valve and also the, the fan will be switched off. Yeah. So in principle, we deactivate our cooling and heating if the uh, window is open. Yeah. Very simple function and I show it to you also later in my, my visualization uh, together with my practical example. Yeah. So window contact, a typical situation. Furthermore, if you have cooling now only active, um, cooling means uh, humidity sometimes in the fan coil unit. Uh, humidity can be dangerous for the system. You can have a drip tray sensor, but also a dew point sensor. Um, and what does it mean? We connect this sensor, this contact again to our input here of the fan coil actuator. And then if it's active, we do the following. Um, yeah, we close the valve in principle and keep the fan running maybe. This is run-on behavior, we can do this, and then uh, automatically is no cooling active anymore, but uh, the humidity will be maybe uh, dissipating a bit uh, out of the system. Um, so also a security option here, where you can use these input contacts here inside the fan coil actuator. But uh, additionally, as mentioned, we can use also a channel here, an input channel as an analog input. What does it mean? We can use it as an additional temperature measurement already discussed a bit with a, a presence detector, for example. Uh, so you can connect directly a pure PT100 or PT1000 temperature sensor, install it in your room, and then you send this measured value to the room temperature controller, which allows to add this additional measurement to the total, let me say, evaluation of the room temperature. So it's possible to add additional two external measurements to the internal measurement. Internal measurement means the measurement of the sensor inside the room temperature controller. Yeah. And also weighting is here possible, uh, so you're very flexible to measure then your temperature in a big room, for example. Okay, so two further special solutions I would like to show to you before I come to the practical example with our uh, visualization. Um, in some projects it's required to operate instead of a valve, a compressor. A compressor, where is uh, of course uh, a cooling machine behind to produce the refrigerant for an AC system, air conditioning system. So in case of any cooling request, you do not open the valve, but we switch on a compressor to produce more cold water, let's say. Um, for us it's only a switching function first of all, but there are some conditions in such compressors for example. Um, you cannot switch on and off the compressor any time because if you start the compressor, it has to run it for a certain time before it's allowed to be switched off. Or and vice versa, if the compressor is switched off, it has to stay switched off for a certain time be before you switch on again. So we have to have a kind of yeah, blocking of switching uh, in, in, at certain times. For example, in a com for a compressor, maybe it's not allowed to switch more than three times per hour. So maximum 20 minutes on, then off, and then on again then one hour is, is complete. How to do this? Um, it's not possible to do this directly in the fan coil actuators or in any room temperature controllers. We need an additional external logic to do this. Uh, it's necessary here. And uh, we have created here uh, a logic together with our application unit, ABLS 2.1, which allows to program this in a graphical environment. And I try to explain quickly here how the logic is working. First of all, our control value coming from the room thermostat has to be compared with a dedicated value where we would like to switch on the compressor. So assumed here we have a threshold or a limit of 50%. If you're over 50% control value, then we need 
cooling uh, refrigerant and more cold water so we have to start the compressor I compare it here this gate gate is in principle a block a functional block which allows you to block or enable telegrams assume the gate is open the telegram can go through can be sent out and switch on the compressor okay nothing special this telegram will be sent to the left here to the control input of this gate and this OR function uh, creates always value 1 independent of whether I switch off or on my compressor so I create always value 1 value 1 can go through the timer and blocks the gate immediately so if I have switched on or off I automatically block my gate so a further command from here maybe coming again will be blocked no switching possible anymore for a certain time and how long depends on the pulse output in this timer here you see here it's adjusted to 20 minutes after 20 minutes this timer will send out a telegram value 0 enables this gate again and then the command can go through again and compressor can be switched on or off depending what happens so in, if in between between the within the 20 seconds or 20 minutes here a command came here it will be stored in the gate after 20 minutes it will be enabled and then command will be sent out to switch over on it guarantees that it will not be operated the compressor um, all the time so it blocks for 20 minutes any further operation yeah you see it's an additional logic necessary but uh, that's the reason why we have such components not only the application unit is uh, is able to handle this of course we have our comfort touch we have in some other decentralized devices also in some logic so in principle possible also in other components yeah and last but not least as a solution a possible solution a special solution um, I have here an example with fan coil control or fan coil units with so-called EC motors electronic commutating motors <coughs> what's that in most of the cases we still work with stepwise control of the fan speed you know we have three outputs in our fan actuators to run the fan in three different speeds depending on the control value okay um, but more and more it's required to have a continuous speed control of the fan not only stepwise and there are these so-called EC electronic commutating motors uh, existing in fan units which have to be controlled this is 0 to 10 volt control signal yeah. so we need no not three relay outputs but we need a uh, continuous control signal 0 to 10 volt why do we do this um, the motors have a higher efficiency and also of course the results is uh, more precise and more powerful control of the room temperature yeah. this is the reason for this so what do we need we need a 0 to 10 volt output for our electronic commut commutating motor what can you do you can of course use any any analog output yeah, but then you need an additional device but we have as you remember um, one component two components with 0 to 10 out volt outputs uh, as fan coil actuators normally for valve control but in principle it's also possible to connect here an EC motor condition is that we have yeah first of all we have electrical parameters of course for this 0 to 10 volt output and this has to fit to the input of the fan coil unit with this EC motor yeah, you see here limited current for example yeah, this is condition of course that it it's possible to connect electrically yeah but then it could be possible another condition or a, a thing you have to accept is that the wording of the group objects and the parameters in the fan coil actuator is not let me say in compliance with this connection of course you see it here in the next slide so if I have my 0 to 10 volt fan coil actuator I use one output for valve control as as, as normal as uh, we do always with this component but the second one I connect my EC motor same group address of course coming from the uh, room thermostat, start and then it works in parallel yeah, it's possible Yeah, control value here from the RTC 441 goes to these both group objects in the fan coil actuator. To be honest, at, at least uh, from my experience, we have not yet any practical experience with this. Uh, but um, 
in principle it's possible maybe uh, if you have already some some feedback in this regard or some experience you can give us some some feedback some information um, at the moment it's a it's a handmade solution i think in the next future we need a dedicated device dedicated fan actuator kx fan actuator to do this uh, but at the moment it could be a possible solution good yeah we are almost at the end exactly four o'clock but i have still something for you uh, as promised i have well, we have created a project in the ets based on ets5 together with a new rtc and our finkel actuator and um, created an ets project with a lot of you see here group objects so a lot of group addresses assigned we try to yeah create a solution with as many options as possible yeah, so practically you will not have all these in every project here uh, so a lot of status feedbacks here uh, valve purge is active here and so on the same on the rts side uh, rtc side sorry rtc side room temperature controller we have enabled many functions here and all assigned to group addresses to work together with the Fenco actuator and you see here's the overview of our selected group addresses so a lot of functions you will get this project of course but also interesting to see how it works in practice and i try to do this right now together with a visualization project and i share with you now um, the application it's a visualization called icebear um, here we are so what can you do you can operate some functions here always if you see here a description on the left you can operate something here also on the right it's only indication status information yeah. so but still something wrong here I just have to look um, it's not completely correctly synchronized here uh, just go to a higher level again yes that's correct uh, okay I need to comfort now. so I think now it's correct again 22 degrees okay now it's everything is synchronized now so let's have a look I measure the room temperature here 19.5 degrees I'm in the automatic mode means room temperature control is active I have a set point of 22 room temperature is only 19.5 what does it mean heating has to be active you see it here that's a control value coming from the RTC that's the status of the valve and the RTC says heating of course that's the feedback of the RTC the room temperature controller yeah. uh, control value 161 means it's running in stage or in speed 2 yeah. but more is necessary at the moment yeah. so what can we do let's change the set point to 20 degrees I have programmed here some fixed set points 20 degrees means it's very close to the room temperature less control value only stage one is necessary yeah. of course if we'd like to have 10 degrees now in the room very low what does it mean cooling has to be active automatically it runs over or goes over to cooling full control value maximum speed three yeah, is correct so automatic mode is active what you can do of course you can go to direct mode you just operate with your local push button directly any fan speed you say okay i need speed number two now you see automatic mode is off yeah, i can go to any speed directly or i use my up and down button to go to the speeds again yeah. up and so on what i've programmed here wait a moment automatic on off will come back after a certain time auto reset we so call, so it's so called means after some seconds I've programmed here only seconds it goes back to automatic mode so again the room thermostat is active and you have again stage 3 and everything is in automatic mode again yeah. uh, let's activate the limitation here remember we can limit the fan speed I have programmed here speed 1 only if I click on this it goes to speed 1 control value is still maximum nothing has been changed from the room thermostat but only I say not more than one uh, speed 1 at the moment night mode for example you can deactivate this and it goes back to the speed 3 again run on behavior 
can activate this as well, remember, to dehumidify the system if necessary, to cool down the heat exchanger. If I activate this, nothing happens, but if I go to my room thermostat now on the lower right side, switch off the room thermostat, no control value anymore, what happens? It goes to speed 1, not completely off, so value is off here for control value. A run on time is active now, and then it goes off. It's only some seconds, yeah? so it does not switch off uh, immediately. Of course, in practice it will be a bit longer, of course. Yeah. So, if I switch on my RTC again, of course, it has to go to speed 3 again because maximum control value is necessary. And I can switch on the run on behavior. To show this, I switch on off now. It goes directly off. Speed 1 is not active for run on time anymore. Okay. Good. Uh, let's simulate window opening. We are in the yeah, uh, in the cooling mode here. Oh, let's ch change the set point now a bit. You can do it also here. 21 degrees. What does it mean? Heating has to be active again. You see, control value is 98 at the moment. Heating is active. Let's open the window. Ah, what did you see here? I mean, <laughs> it started with stage 3. It's the start, yeah, start up behavior, so called. So if you st switch on the RTC, it works first of all with, with speed 3 for a certain time before it goes to the right level. Let's open the window. What does it mean? Set point will be reduced to 7 degrees. Uh, frost mode, so called. Control value is off or zero, and of course, no fan is running and um, valve will be closed. Yeah. If I close the window, it goes back to the former mode. Yeah. The same I can do for cooling. Let's reduce the set point that we have cooling active, 18 degrees maybe. Okay, you see, no heating anymore, but low cooling. It starts again with speed 3, you see it here, before it goes back to the necessary speed, depending on the control value. Now I have maybe my condensate, condense, condensed water uh, problem here. I activate the sensor. Set point will be increased to 35 degrees for cooling. What does it mean? No control value, fan closed, eh, sorry, valve closed and fan zero. Uh -huh. Let's reduce or disable this, then it works correctly again. Um, one other option, maybe finally, I would like to show a uh, parallel mode. Yeah, so parallel mode. You see here, at the moment, how we go to, let's take yeah, 20 degrees heating, for example. Okay, it's, it's the same for cooling. But if heating is now active, you see it's only a low control value. And now I can activate parallel mode of both valves. Means the cooling valve will also work together with the heating valve. Of course, condition is that hot water goes into the, the pipe system of the cooling. Yeah. If I activate parallel mode, first of all, nothing happens. We need a new control value to be sent on the bus. I can simulate this, this by sending a new set point. And you see immediately, okay, 30 degrees means full heating. And also the heating valve, sorry, the cooling valve will be opened. And if there is hot water, uh, it's, it's running in parallel and um, you have a boost mode for heating, for example. Okay, so you see some options you have here in the, in the, um, uh, in the visualization. You can test this, you get everything in our feedback email. We will send it to you. If you want, you can adapt this a bit and um, test something which might be necessary or interesting for you. Okay, time is running. I would like to stop here. Going back to our two further final slides. Um, remember, of course, you get all these presentations and, and recorded uh, webinar files as always, but it's also now available directly on internet, as you might know. We have here direct links for any customer uh, to our former uh, webinars as well, both uh, the movie uh, the recorded file, but also the presentation will be available. But again, we send you the direct link also very soon next week with all these files from the today's presentation and webinar. Um, I hope you know our specification toolbox, uh, which normally is a USB stick yeah, with some, some files inside. In principle, for consultants, um, some examples of projects 
hotel, a private building and uh, also uh, office building with some specifications, uh, some, some drawings, some project examples on different levels, basic, advanced and premium. Now we have the second version available, which also includes now uh, the hotel guest rooms uh, on these three different levels. So real, let me say, projects based on KNX, of course, with the necessary, let me say, documentation. Um, new is, besides this extension of the content, also that these uh, yeah, files are also available now online. Not only via hardware, via USB stick, but you can go directly on our homepage now and download uh, all these files or the customer by yourself. Yeah. So you can give it, get it also as a USB, USB stick <laughs> right now uh, as a kind of gift to your customers or you use the link. Good, coming to the end means a preview to our next webinar on the uh, 2nd of March. Uh, um, yeah, back to the roots, you can say this because we, we talk about the basics and the, the overview of our KNX products in this webinar. So really no, no specialties, uh, no new products, but uh, in our also internal new organization, I think some people would like to know a bit more about KNX, what is it at all, and would like to have an overview of our solutions and our products. And we would like to do this in this next webinar, uh, as always at nine o'clock, at three o'clock, and in almost uh, on five weeks, it will be done by Jürgen and myself. And of course, we will invite you uh, on time. Thank you so much for participating. I hope it was interesting. Um, we sent you everything. See you next time on the 2nd of March. Um, bye bye and thank you. Ciao.